Hello and welcome to this edition of Culture Mosaic, a weekly journal that brings you the latest updates on the cultural and entertainment scenes here in Vietnam. As we celebrate International Women's Day on March the 8th, we are thrilled to introduce you to a remarkable female author who has crafted a stunning collection of works that beautifully capture the essence of life and the indomitable spirit of women. With a unique background, born to a Vietnamese mother and French father, she has embarked on numerous journeys to Vietnam, unearthing her roots and using her writings to elevate Vietnamese culture. This week, our cultural explorations takes us to a traditional pottery village nestled in the heart of Vietnam to discover the tireless efforts being made to preserve this cherished tradition in our modern society. Lastly, we invite you to delve into the captivating story of a Vietnamese vlogger who has seized the opportunity to travel abroad and showcase the mesmerizing beauty of Vietnam to the world. So join us as we unravel the fascinating tales behind the lands, offering a glimpse into the breathtaking images that have captivated audiences worldwide. Ceramic mural, a new look for Phu Lãng traditional pottery. Isabel Muller, drawing inspiration from her mother's homeland. Vietnamese vlogger promotes image of Vietnam by traveling abroad. And now let's begin with some local news. Vietnam, the only representative of Asia, has ranked fifth in a list of the 10 best graduation trips to take in 2024 by Lonely Planet. According to the travel magazine, Vietnam is the affordable, beautiful and warm country which will get graduates out of their comfort zone. Highlights by the magazine are Vietnamese tourist destinations such as Hanoi, Ha Long Bay, Ho Chi Minh City and the Mekong Delta. While visitors can expect to see plenty of scooters rushing around the streets and enjoy popular street food in Hanoi, travelers can embark on a cruise to admire limestone islands in Ha Long Bay, designated as a UNESCO World Natural Heritage Site. They can also explore other destinations such as Ho Chi Minh City and the Mekong Delta. Hanoi will continue to organize a light show with hundreds of drones this weekend, according to Hanoi Department of Tourism. The program will be held at Tây Hồ Creative Cultural Space or Chik Công Sơn Walking Street. The drone performance will start at 9.30 p.m. on March the 9th, lasting for about three minutes. The activity is part of the Hanoi Tourism Program to welcome 2024 and announce the decision to recognize Nhật Tân of Tây Hồ district as a tourist area. Water-based passenger transportation services such as boats, canoes, water motorbikes, water bicycles and many other types will be permitted to operate on West Lake according to a new regulation. This regulation was recently issued by the Hanoi People's Committee as part of their management strategy for West Lake. The city also mandates that all organizations and individuals involved in production business and service activities implement measures to mitigate dust, emissions and noise pollution. The Management Board for Heritage Sites and Scenic Landscapes in Hanoi had officially introduced the Ngoc Sơn Mystical Night Tour. The tour features various engaging activities. This initiative aims to boost night tourism and capitalize on the cultural identity of the capital. The program contains five main themes. The ceremony of giving holy words in the Penn Tower area. The ritual of welcoming the spirit of heaven and earth in the Thế Húc Bridge area. The revival of the legend of King Lele's return of the sword. The prayer ceremony in the main temple area. And a visit to the gallery of specimens of the world's sea turtles. These experiences spanning 60 minutes evoke a lot of emotions among visitors. 
the Aozai Week 2024 launch ceremony and parade recently took place in Phu Quoc City, Kinzang Province. Over 200 city officials and workers prepared early for the event, all dressed in vibrant traditional Aozai. Following the launch ceremony, they paraded through Mekdang Park and the city's main roads. The group also visited the memorial temple to honor heroic matters. In adherence to Aozai Week, officials and employees also wore the traditional outfit to work. This initiative aims to honor the traditional outfit and stimulate a sense of responsibility to preserve and promote Vietnamese cultural heritage. Deeply rooted in the heritage of northern Vietnam, Phu Lang pottery stands as one of the oldest traditional crafts in the region. Yet, amidst the currents of modern economic trends, this cherished profession has faced challenges in maintaining its competitive edge in the market. In the quest to infuse new life and relevance into Phu Lang pottery, passionate individuals have embarked on a journey to redefine its value in contemporary society. Today, we'll bring you one such inspiring story of transformation. Dòng gốm Phu Lãng là dòng gốm sành, nó rất là thuần biệt và có những cái màu men truyền thống nó rất là mộc mạc trầm ấm. Trước kia thì gốm phủ lãng không được phổ biến rộng rãi, chủ yếu là tập trung vào các sản phẩm dân dụng nhiều. Tôi và một số nghệ sĩ trẻ khác cũng có cái tham vọng muốn đưa các cái diện mạo mới vào các cái sản phẩm gốm phủ lãng. Đức Thịnh began his career in phủ lãng pottery over 20 years ago, initially a painter. He utilized his painting expertise in traditional pottery. Chất liệu gốm thì nó thích hợp với các cái tác phẩm đắp nổi có cái tính điêu khắc. Thì mình cũng tìm tòi để có ra một cái hướng đi riêng và mình thích chinh phục những cái những cái bức tranh lớn. These artistically beautiful and visually rich ceramic murals are the latest pottery products that artisan Đức Thịnh and his family have introduced to Phu Lãng pottery. Trong cái tranh gốm nó có những cái thế mạnh, tính nghệ thuật cao thì mình cảm giác như là mình được thỏa sức sáng tạo nhiều hơn có thể là, là vài mét vuông cho tới hàng trăm mét vuông Tranh gốm có khoảng 10 công đoạn à, Ban đầu là mình dàn đất ra mặt phẳng rồi là mình sẽ phát thảo trên cái, cái mặt phẳng ở trên đất này Rồi công đoạn tiếp theo là mình đắp, đắp nổi lên Cái như thế này thì đắp phần thô này và sau lại chỉnh sửa thì hết khoảng độ nửa tháng. So với tất cả những loại tranh khác hay là phù điêu bằng xi măng hoặc chất liệu khác ấy, thì cái tranh gốm nó nổi bật lên là nó rất là thân thiện với môi trường. Công đoạn tiếp theo là mình sẽ cắt chia làm miếng. Có những bức tranh lên hàng nghìn miếng. Rồi công đoạn tiếp theo là tô màu, tô men. Rồi, xong đó là mình mang vào lò luôn. Thì đây có một số cái màu mà từ tự nhiên lấy từ đất, từ cát, từ đá và bùn sông. Đấy, màu này cũng là màu uh, truyền thống của phù lãng. Khi mà nung ra thì cái, cái sắc màu nó sẽ trầm đi, tạo ra một cái cảm giác là nó, 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 nó mộc mạc. Uh, mình tô men màu xong, mình vào màu xong thì thì mình mới đem đi nung. Đấy thì khoảng một nghìn hai trăm độ C cho nên là nó độ bền nó rất là cao. gốm của mình, mình muốn lưu giữ lại các cái văn hóa của đồng bằng Bắc Bộ, phong cảnh của làng quê Việt Nam, cây đa, những nước sân đình, rồi những cảnh sinh hoạt, rồi cày cấy của cha ông mình ngày xưa. At present, ceramic murals crafted by artisan Đức Thịnh are popular in many regions across the country. Cái gốm này một là nó có hồn, nó có chiều sâu, tay nghề nghệ thuật người ta làm rất đẹp. Cùng một cái bức tranh như cái mà nhìn Ông bố nó khác, ông con, ông con nó khác, ông cháu. Tôi nghĩ nếu không có những sự đổi mới phát triển thì những nghề thủ công truyền thống như gốm phủ lãng sẽ rất dễ bị mai một trên thị trường. Nhưng nếu chúng ta sáng tạo và liên tục làm mới nó để tăng giá trị, 
cho nó Thì nghề gốm của cha ông truyền lại sẽ tiếp tục sống mãi Is destiny a predetermined path, or do we have the power to shape our own lives? Is there a purpose in our endeavors despite the uncertainties we face? As humans, do we navigate the complexities of existence to discover our authentic selves amid life's triumphs and tribulations? In her newest novel, acclaimed Vietnamese French author Isabel Muller explores these profound inquiries. Join us on this episode of On the Mic as we delve into the captivating origins and diverse influences that have given birth to this extraordinary literary work. The novel Just a Heartbeat Away From You was written over a period of 10 months. It tells the story of Anna, a woman who, after experiencing a profound disappointment, contemplates suicide. Simultaneously, a man named Mark longs for his old life. On the precipice of life and death, Anna and Mark's souls find themselves intertwined. After experiencing a series of strange events, both Anna and Mark return to their normal lives, appreciating them more than ever and embarking on meaningful journeys. Thank you, Isabel, so much for joining our show today. You're welcome. Yes. And we have to talk about your book, uh, Just a Heartbeat Away From You, which was recently published on International Women's Day, March the 8th. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. So what are some of the biggest influences that shaped the creation of this book? In fact, it is because uh, I experienced myself when I was a child, um, something very special. Uh, I, ha I think uh, I had a near-death uh, experience uh, when I was very little and uh, I saw things and I experienced things that were very strange and that comforted me a lot and that took away my fears. Uh, I have never been afraid of dying and this is something that I noticed was very special uh, uh, while I was growing up, uh, talking to people, meeting them, uh, we were exchanging our thoughts about this feeling, you know, uh, and most of them I noticed were afraid of it, you know, afraid of, oh my God, what's going to happen? And so I thought, okay, I could write a novel, something, um, you know, kind of a soft love story, but with deep messages. Outside, the wind is blowing rough, you know, rough, and it doesn't matter. Let it blow. It's the wind. Exactly. It's the duty of the wind to blow. But if you stay confident and always keep your goal in front of you, and if you have a, a kind and clean, pure heart, the universe will always love you and help you. Right. It will be up to you to, to believe in it or not, but it might be um, a way of seeing things. Could you please tell me about your inspiration for this book? I love, deeply love Vietnam. Uh, it gives me strength. I mean, it makes me feel good. Uh, it gives also a sense to our lives. Uh, in the novel, you will find a, a passage, especially at the end of the book, where Anna is uh, volunteering and, uh, and doing something with her big love uh, in Vietnam. Uh, they are working for the foundation, the Luan Foundation. Uh, that is supporting uh, poor children of Vietnam. So yes, there is a connection. Isabel Mueller was born on May 25, 1964, in Tours, France. She is the youngest of five children, born to a Vietnamese mother and a French father, and grew up in a humble French village. Isabel has always been passionate about learning and self-improvement. Fluent in German, English, French, and Russian, she has been working as an interpreter and translator in Germany since 1985. After getting married, she started her writing and business career in Germany. In addition to the novel Just a Heartbeat Away From You, she has written two autobiographies inspired by Vietnam, focusing on her mother's life and her own. 
inspired by stories from her mother, Luan, whose real name is Do Thị Cúc. Isabel Miller spent over a year researching Vietnam's history and geography to write her book, Luan, From the Life of a Phoenix. It took her another two years to complete it. The book was well received by German readers and quickly became an Amazon bestseller in several categories. It was also shortlisted for the Kindle Storyteller, the German self-publishing award in 2015. Phoenix's daughter, Hope is My Way, is Isabel Mueller's second book. It tells the story of a resilient woman of Vietnamese heritage who refuses to be defeated by adversity. Despite life's challenges, she becomes a successful writer and entrepreneur in Germany. Uh, so that is like a slight departure from your past works, which are mainly biographies. Uh, do you have uh, some difficulties or is the process a little bit different this time around? Well, in fact, it is quite different uh, because when you write a biography, uh, you are uh, making a chronic, you know, mm -hmm. chronicle. Uh, you have to follow up the, the life uh, line of the, the characters inside and you have not uh, much choice, you know, you cannot uh, you cannot change anything. You have really to follow strictly the, the rules. Mm -hmm. But uh, with a novel, uh, it is up to you. It is up to your imagination and uh, to your creativity. Uh, and you have to show your best and share really your fantasy and all and put all what you can do inside. So you have it's a tough work, but it is also uh, a passion. So for me, writing a novel like this is not. Um, a big challenge. I, it is something I consider like uh, something I love. Uh, it is an enjoyable journey for me. Not only are you giving the readers of this book a lot of good advices, a lot of strength, um, this, all the revenues from this book, is also going into the foundation that are going to help underprivileged children to rise to the occasion and achieve their potential. Um, so can you tell more about this endeavor? What I earn with uh, my writing uh, I will donate it to, to my foundation in order to help uh, the poorest children. This is, I think, a nice thought and this is something I will follow, I promised. <laughs> and so, uh, yes, this is what I'm doing. You embarked on many journeys in Vietnam to help underprivileged kids. And uh, among of those journeys, which one stands out to you the most and why? I only have beautiful memories, yeah. Especially when I see the, the results. You know, every time I visit a, an old site uh, where we have uh, set up a boarding house or a school or where we have distributed books, uh, I am always welcome mm -hmm. and I see the happiness in the eyes of the teachers, of the children, yes. and I see the, the progresses they make. Uh, they keep reading, they want to learn, they, they love staying there. And so for me, it's uh, showing me that we, we took the right decision and uh, it is going, moving in the right direction. Right. Yeah. Muddy roads that are a struggle to walk on. Remote areas that face several difficulties. Despite numerous challenges, the Ram Foundation team has arrived to survey the area, thereby providing children with an improved environment for living and studying. The Luan Foundation is a private charity established in 2016 by author Isabel Mueller. The foundation primarily operates in the northern regions of Vietnam, offering up various support programs for children and adolescents. Over the past eight years, the Luan Foundation has managed over 40 projects, collectively receiving more than 1.5 million euros from donors. The projects are centered around constructing schools, facilities, and libraries, as well as distributing books. Bây giờ con ở nội chú rồi nên là không phải đi bộ nhiều nữa ạ. đây ngủ ấm, có các bạn chơi cùng thích ạ.
Isabel Mueller gives back to her mother's homeland, Vietnam, through meaningful activities via the Luan Foundation. The Luan Foundation was honored in the Inspirational Project category at the Human Act Prize 2023. So what are your plans for the future, you know, aside from your tireless philanthropist work? Um, will the fans of your book and of you as a person will be able to receive a book after this one? Writing novels and sharing uh, different stories uh, is what I want to do. It, it is one of the biggest wishes I have uh, carried in my heart. And the subject will always, I guess, be giving hope, giving strength, and I will use a few things that I've learned out of it to move on. Yes. This is what I want to do. Yeah. Thank you so much, Isabel, for spending your time with us here today, talking about your book, your own personal journey, and your gifts as well. And we hope that all your future endeavors, both your work in Vietnam, as well as your future book, is going to receive a lot of success. Thank you so much. Yeah, right. <laughs> I love your wish. Thank you. Travel, once primarily perceived as an opportunity to discover new lands and cultures, is now being viewed differently, especially among young Vietnamese travelers. Rather than just broadening their horizons, these individuals are using their journeys abroad to promote Vietnam's image. Among these traveler vloggers, YouTuber Chan Laka has gained millions of views for his videos highlighting Vietnamese culture. In today's Connecting Culture segment, let's explore the journey of this young vlogger as he strives to improve how Vietnam is portrayed to the world. Hoàng Minh Tuấn, known for creating million view videos on YouTube channel Chan La Ca has featured the journey of iconic Vietnamese objects across different regions of Nepal. He has recently showcased the Vietnamese flag on the Himalayas of India with pride. Bản thân mình thực sự là một người rất là yêu Việt Nam. Mình là một người rất là thích chụp hình và quay phim và có thể làm sáng tạo nội dung thì tại sao mình không làm những cái thước phim mà nó có gửi gắm vào đó những cái tình cảm, những cái tâm tư cũng như là len lỏi vào đó những cái sự tự hào khi mình là một người Việt Nam để giới thiệu đến bạn bè quốc tế. Việt Nam. Uh, <cười> 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 Việt Nam. Yeah. Oh, <cười> From Vietnam. Okay. Yeah. It's bánh đậu xanh. It's from uh, coconut leaf float. Ah. Uh, yeah. Ban đầu mình cũng không có nghĩ là cái câu chuyện của mình hoặc là những cái món quà của mình đó, mọi người là thích như vậy. Nhưng mà sau một thời gian thì là khi mà mình quan sát được những cái khán giả người ở Nepal hoặc là Ấn Độ, mọi người xem và mọi người cũng khá là thích. Thì bản thân mình là một cái phần nhỏ có thể kết nối và mang những cái hình ảnh uh, của Việt Nam ra ngoài với các bạn như vậy thì uh, mình cũng cảm thấy rất là vui và tự hào. Chan cũng rất là vui và tự hào khi mình cùng với lại bạn bè cũng đã kết nối và mua vòng tay á, cho một bé gái để giúp em có thể có thêm tiền để trang trải sinh hoạt phí trong cuộc sống. For them, it's not only about the money, it's about the love and compassion of the Vietnamese people as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. <cười> Sau cái câu chuyện Nepal của mình chia sẻ lên mạng thì một cái trang tin rất là lớn của Nepal đăng tin lại và ở dưới cái post đó thì mọi người cũng dành những cái bình luận rất là tích cực. Việt Nam là một đất nước tươi đẹp với con người thân thiện. Tôi dự định sẽ quay lại thăm Việt Nam vào năm nay. Người tình yêu từ Nepal đến tất cả người Việt Nam, bạn thật hào phóng. Tôi có một sự ngưỡng mộ rất lớn với bạn và người Việt Nam. Người Việt Nam thật sự rất tốt bụng. Tôi tin rằng người Việt Nam cũng chân thành và tốt bụng như Chan La Cả. Tôi sẽ sớm đến thăm Việt Nam. Take advantage of these experiential treats to promote Vietnam's culture. 
Namaste. Through beautiful actions to spread the Vietnamese spirit. For your tuitions for your college, please use it to pursue education, fulfilling your dreams. Brother Chen. This content creator is contributing to enhancing his country's image with every step of his journey to explore the world. And then, when he departs, what he leaves behind is... <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. 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 Sing chào Việt Nam. Come on, cut back. And that's it for this edition of Culture Mosaic. Thank you very much for watching. To rewatch our program, you can log on to our website or tune in our YouTube channel. And don't forget to join us next week for another episode of Culture Mosaic. Goodbye for now.